After taking over as the general manager for the Kansas City Chiefs, Brett Veach went about trying to get to the Super Bowl, and after seeing that it was the defense that stopped the Chiefs from playing in the Super Bowl, and namely a defensive end who stopped the Chiefs from playing in the Super Bowl, he tried to fix that problem, and he has invested very high assets at the defensive end position. <clears throat> George Karloftis and Felix Anudike Uzoma were both first-rounders. Mike Dana and B.J. Thompson were both fifth-rounders. And Charles Aminihu was about as high-profile a free agent move as Brett Veach likes to make. Last season... FAU stepped onto the field in the NFL, and he didn't really do so very often, playing only 218 snaps during the entirety of his rookie regular season. And it was not the most impressive. There's, there's a stat that I think is very encouraging that we'll get to later, <clears throat> but is there any promise that that performance will get better? I think there is. <clears throat> In fact, if we are to take Arrowhead pride at face value, there might be very good reason to believe so. In an article titled, George Karloftis, Felix Enudike Uzoma, Train Jiu-Jitsu to Prep for 2024, pinned by Ron Kopp, and I've got to stop right here. Arrowhead Pride, AP. I know you're not the Associated Press, but you might as well be. I don't read the Associated Press, but I do read Arrowhead Pride. It's the only media, this is the most mainstream media that I get here on the channel. Ron is doing all the work, it seems, lately. Where is everyone? Moving on. In the article, he states, quote, Defensive end George Karloftis wasted no time making an impact on the Kansas City Chiefs after being drafted in the first round in 2022. He has started all 33 regular season games the Chiefs starters have played and all seven playoff games, including the post and all seven playoff games, including the postseason. He already has 20.5 career sacks turned 23 years old this spring. Karloftis has only scratched the surface of who he can be as a player. The ascension he will make from here won't happen by accident, and his commitment to improving has rubbed off on another young defensive end. Since last summer, Karloftis has trained with former Chiefs edge rusher Tom Bahali in the martial art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is funny, taking a step back from the article here, because I've always said that George Karloftis looks like Lex Friedman on steroids. That has continued this offseason and now includes 2023 first-round pick Felix and Yudike Uzoma. After practice on Friday, Karloftis shared some details with reporters during his press conference. There was a connection and we all three started going, Karloftis revealed. We got Master Dave out there doing jujitsu, and it's great. We get up early in the morning and go to work on our stuff. That has been great to do whenever we get the chance, end quote. Now, I have to take a minute to preface this because I am a bit of a recluse. The whole thing's a little weird to me, but who am I? I'm just a guy talking at a microphone in front of his computer every day for the past 450-ish days about the Kansas City Chiefs. So, what is there to make of Felix Enudike Uzoma training with George Karloftis and the incomparable Tom Bahali in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Well, Here's what we saw from George Karloftis between Season 1 and Season 2. As a rookie, he played 730 snaps in his sophomore campaign, 755, an increase of just 25 snaps over his rookie season, about a snap and a half average per game, more than he did his rookie year. He went from 33 tackles all the way up to 47 tackles. He went from six sacks 
all the way up to 10 and a half sacks. He went from 11 quarterback hurries all the way up to 17. That's an average of one per game. And he went from 21 pressures to 35 pressures, an average of two pressures per game. George Karloftis cashing in basically the same amount of snaps took his tackles up 25%, almost doubled his sacks, took his quarterback hurries up 33%, and his pressures up 33% as well. George Karloftis improved immensely between his first and second seasons. But guys, the real testament to George Karloftis was the fact that during his rookie season, all of that progress, all of the, basically all of the stats you see on the screen happened in the second half of his rookie year. In fact, the weird thing about it is they cut back a little bit on his snap counts around the midseason point, and he got better from there. So what did we see from Felix Enudike Uzoma in his rookie season? On just 218 snaps, he had 14 tackles, one half of a sack, seven quarterback hits, and nine pressures. Now, I have been on the record for a long time saying that I think that the ceiling for FAU is Mike Dana. It's a good ceiling. Nothing to, uh, well, there's something to complain about, but only because he was a first rounder. If FAU had been taken in the middle of the second round, with that statistical output on his rookie season, still you would have hoped for a little bit more, but the writing would be on the wall for what he can be with doubling or tripling his snap counts. And if he, if he tripled his snap counts from there, he's in the George Karloftis range. And if you triple his tackles from there, you're looking at George Karloftis type numbers, not sacks, not, well, quarterback, here's the thing. Not sacks, but quarterback hurries and pressures, if you tripled them, would be on par with George Karloftis' second season. Not his first. But what one thing we can look at here, in 2022 as a rookie, George Karloftis averaged a pressure every 34.8 snaps. 34.8 snaps to pressure conversion rate. Now, what's a pressure, right? A pressure isn't a sack. A pressure isn't a tackle. A pressure is basically ruining the quarterback's day for one play. That's what a pressure is. You make him think something different. In 2023, he jumped all the way up to having a pressure every 21.6 snaps. In Felix Enudike Uzoma's rookie season, he had a pressure every 24.2 snaps, meaning that as a rookie on a snap-by-snap -snap basis, Felix Enudike Uzoma affected a passing play nearly as often, nearly as often as George Karloftis did in his second year. This doesn't mean he made the sack. This doesn't mean he deflected the pass. This doesn't mean, this doesn't mean, this doesn't mean, this doesn't mean. But what it does mean is that he's getting close. We saw it with George Karloftis between his rookie and second seasons. He started converting more, more pressures into hits, more hits into sacks. If... FAU can follow that type of trajectory, he's going to do well in his second season as far as getting, as far as at least getting pressures, but converting pressures into hits and sacks. Now, much has been made, and in fact, I have made much on the channel about the differences between George Karloftis and Felix Anudike Uzoma. Uh, it is kind of one of those things that FAU is not the prototypical Spagnolo defensive end. But 
if we dig into numbers a little bit, and we only have a little bit of numbers to dig into because FAU didn't do a whole lot of testing coming out of college. George, So the, the big thing is that George Karloftis is the meteor guy, right? George Karloftis is the big, strong defensive end that kind of marches forward like a zombie and doesn't stop until he's got a quarterback in his hands. George Karloftis is 6'4", FAU is 6'3". George Karloftis is 266 pounds. This is the big deal, right? The meaty George Karloftis, the big buff George Karloftis and the pass rusher FAU. FAU is 255. That's 11 pounds. Now, in fairness, I believe, so this was at the Combine. I believe George Karloftis has added weight since then. I believe he is over 270 now. But as a prospect, these things were the same. Now, here's something interesting. George Karloftis, that bigger guy, and here's 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 something worth taking into account. Maybe no sport other than, maybe, maybe MMA, maybe the UFC, maybe mixed martial arts, very few sports quite like football put into real perspective the differences in body composition. It, probably, if you're, if you're watching this, you played football at some level. You remember the guy who was 180 pounds and was the super athlete. He was the fastest guy on the team. The quarterback just had to chuck the ball up. He could go up and get it. You remember that guy. He was 180 pounds. Probably, you also remember a 190-pound offensive guard. I promise you. Those two things happened at some point in your football career. So body composition matters greatly in the sport of football. So that 11-pound difference can make two guys look completely different. But they both ran a 4-3-4 short shuttle. That 20-yard short shuttle that is... um, one of the ways that people re- that scouts and general managers really like to have on paper this number because it measures the start and stop ability of a sport like football for some reason FAU decided not to do very much testing at all but did do the short shuttle it's a good number 434 for a defensive end it, and look guys I am not the greatest with the short shuttle numbers I believe that's a good number for a defensive end, so don't quote me. George Karloftis is actually a more explosive athlete with a 38-inch vertical versus FAU's 34-inch vertical. I believe they both did broad jumps, but I did not take note of those numbers. Now, the reason I am putting all of this on screen right now is that it is easy to look at George Karloftis and say, well, yeah, he's playing all those snaps and he's got a, a better snap to pressure ratio than FAU, if even only by about three snaps per pressure. Um, but what happens when a littler guy like FAU gets on the field more often? He just gets pushed around a lot more. He's not simply on the field in passing situations like he probably was as a rookie without looking too into those numbers. I don't know why you would put FAU on the field in third and one. But when we start looking at these numbers, the actual size of the athletes involved, they're not that different of sizes. If George Karloftis can take advantage of something like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and learn a little bit more mojo, have a little bit more mana from the heavens fall on him in his sophomore campaign than in his rookie campaign, so too can FAU. And the one of the things that gets very underrated especially from talking heads and guys like me that are just spitting into a microphone, is that um, there are humans behind the helmets, inside the helmets, behind the face mask. There's a human there. The immense amount of... Look at Tom Brady 
and I know it's Tom Brady. It's, it's sort of like it, it's the easiest comparison in, in football to make because it's so obvious. If you were around during those first few seasons that Tom Brady was in the NFL, he was not an assassin. That team won, that Patriots team won their first Super Bowl despite, not in spite of, but despite Tom Brady. Tom Brady had the wherewithal. Tom Brady put together all of the work ethic you could ever want to have in a professional athlete and crafted himself into something absolutely elite. Tom Brady did that. This might sound like it's not complimentary because Tom Brady did not enter the league as Patrick Mahomes, but Tom Brady was able to put together the GOAT resume on coming into the league and winning a Super Bowl despite being a game manager. The first few seasons, Tom Brady was a starter. He was not the be-all, end-all. He was not the GOAT. Nobody thought that. In fact, if you go back to those days, if you read the press clippings from that time, the quarterback that everyone thought was on pace to be the next GOAT, or at least the greatest of his era, was Ben Roethlisberger. I, you don't have to believe me. Go back and find out. Um, probably, I, I've looked at the demographics for this channel. Probably you remember that. This is, this is no secret to you. But FAU, Felix Enyudike Uzoma, had a disappointing rookie season. I think that is undeniable. You don't want to use your first round pick on a guy who plays just 218 snaps. In fact, in fact, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Had the Chiefs selected Joey Porter Jr., I did it. With that pick, we wouldn't be asking questions about Legereus Sneed right now, would we? we? We would be asking questions about the third defensive end for the Kansas City Chiefs, but would we? Maybe we would have taken some other defensive end in the meantime. Maybe there would have been some other Charles Aminihu type signing. But this defensive backfield would still be absolutely elite with Joey Porter Jr. back there. But I, I'm not saying that the Chiefs should not have drafted FAU. What I'm making the case for is that there's a reason the Chiefs did draft FAU. Hopefully not just because it was a Kansas City guy, right? But uh, with the draft in Kansas City, the Kansas City Chiefs winning the Super Bowl, yada, yada, yada. But... Uh, they saw something in FAU that they thought was absolutely controvertible to the football field. And hopefully they were right. And if, if anyone is going to do something like that, it's going to be someone who has the dedication to work long hours during their off season getting better. That's all I have for this video. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other Kansas City Chiefs fans. And if you find yourself here by chance but not designed, the Kansas City Chiefs are the only thing I talk about on this channel, dropping multiple videos every single week exclusively about the Chiefs. We're nearing 5,000 subscribers, so uh, make sure you come back for the next one.